Barrett. All right. With that in mind, let's go live. Lisa, joining us to watch today and to talk about the case is our good friend, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, Joanna Greenwald. Thank and you. as we heard Lisa report, the witness on the stand Lisa. is Janice Williamson, serologist. This is live testimony out of Nashville, Tennessee live action. Joanna, upon reading the file and uh, the two days of testimony we've had thus far, what's your initial reaction to this very cold case? What I don't get and I don't understand and is that how is this evidence even in there? Like this now with my defense hat? You mean how is it admissible? How, how, how has it not been tossed out? And because we, if in New York you have chain of custody. Yes. And we obviously have a problem here. That, uh, of a chain of custody after all of these years of things being contaminated, not contaminated, things like that, sent back, not sent back, where was it stored, all these other things, and yet it's still here. You know, I, I just don't understand how it's still here, you know, because normally you would be moving to suppress and have this whole thing tossed out because you have tainted evidence. W which they no doubt did, and I want to ask Lisa about that, but I want to ask you, Joanna, about something else in this case. What do you make of the jailhouse snitch part of it? And I ask you that in particular because you are also a former prosecutor. Do you think that's an important component for the prosecutor here? See, jailhouse snitches are a good thing and a bad thing. Just as when people go on and they are someone who has a plea deal, there's always some form of bias. And you have to overcome that with a juror to say that they're there really out of the goodness of their hearts and it's not because they're promised something. And that's the prosecution side. Defense side, you want to go against jailhouse snitches because you say, you know what? They never said it. This guy's just out to better himself to get out early, the snitch. And that's exactly it. He's a dirty rat, he's scum, and why would you want to believe him? Yeah. So that's both sides. We like them and we hate them. All right, well, with both sides in mind, Joanna, let's take a listen to a little bit of Shelton Anter in this case. Cold jailhouse snitch in this case, Shelton Anter. Let's jump back out to Joanna Greenwald. So we talked about it a little bit before we saw his testimony. Now yes. you can react to what do you think look what i up? have jamie you always have a prop i well, have a have marker today? <laughs> which means that i wrote something and it said liar <laughs> liar, a big red liar, Sharpie. liar we're gonna have to search you on the way into this oh i got <laughs> a marker yeah. all right so you don't buy him thus far he's only been up he's, there a few minutes he's facing deportation come on let's uh, we're all logical people watching this all right joanna greenwald is facing deportation Guess what? And I have a family here. You want to know something? Magically, I hear lots of stuff. I hear voices. I might have tinfoil attached to my head, so I hear lots. And guess what? I'm going to tell you everything. Matter of fact, everybody's my best friend in jail. I'm going to tell you about everybody, because guess what? Magically, it stayed. There's no plea deal, and you know nothing about it. I don't believe him. I don't believe the prosecution. <laughs> Give me a break. This one, I would have a field day with, and I would have markers. Yeah, magic markers. Magic. You, you use that magic. word magically. All right. Well, there you have it. No, uh, no beating around the bush from Joanna Greenwald. She is not buying it from Shelton Anter. But we're going to have more of his testimony. You can make your own determination. Maybe he'll, uh, he'll uh, drum up some credibility as he continues. See him cross-examined about his motivation, defense attorneys would say, and I imagine Joanna Greenwald would say to lie. Who, so far, how do you think the cross is going? I think actually the cross is uh, doing very well. As a matter of fact, he didn't even have to get Mr. An uh, Anter to say, um, are you implying that I would be doing this? He actually said it himself. He didn't even have to do that. He got him to say it to put it into the juror's head. That's wonderful for the defense to just get the guy to just keep on talking. Yes, of course I'm looking for a way not to leave the country. Are you implying that I'm looking to? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. I'm going for coffee. And you know, Joanna, we get a lot of questions in cases like this. We had uh, similar questions in the last live trial. Uh, explain how the INS hold process works. If you're caught up in a criminal case, uh, whether you're the snitch or the defendant or uh, whatever, if you're charged with a crime in the United States, uh, and your status is such that the INS can come after you, who takes precedence? H how is it that the federal government resolves these matters with the state government of whatever jurisdiction you're, you're dealing with? This is where playing well with others among different government entities comes into play that unfortunately or fortunately, depending on what side you're on, uh, it works or it doesn't work. 
I remember when we had a case here that I, that I worked on that INS, which involved gang members, INS failed to recognize a hold. And a guy got out and shot a young gentleman on his way home to his family. And holds generally would take precedent where you can't, you can't get out until this is resolved. Meaning even on a lower scale, for example, if you have a case in criminal court, in a local court, unless both are resolved, you may not get out. You may not get bailed out or bonded out because you have a hold from some other court. Here it's on a greater scale because it's the federal government. So you right. aren't going anywhere until it's resolved. That's right. And I liked, I liked your word earlier, cooperation. Let me run uh, out to Lisa Sweetingham quickly before we have to jump out to the break. So, Lisa, we are in this lunch break, and we expect it will end. We're moving about inside that courthouse, and we do expect live action, as Lisa reports, to begin at any moment. Let's bring in our good friend, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, Joanna Greenwald. On that very point, Joanna, this issue of closure. This woman was so incredibly composed and yet 33 years, 34 years later, clearly still grieving the loss of her daughter. And I, I wonder your opinion as both a former prosecutor and now a criminal defense attorney on this notion of closure. Because I do think we can find justice for victims and achieve it for anyone touched by this kind of horrific crime. But do you think closure ever really comes? Um, I think on a human level, you would pray for that for anybody who has had something awful happen to them, no matter who they are or what they are, or socioeconomic status. You want closure for anybody. Do people truly get that? Who am I to know? Because it's a healing process, and you, as as we are listening, 33 years, and it's as if it happened for this woman yesterday. And it, it doesn't matter how much time goes by. When someone loses a loved one, of course they're still going to miss them. Of course are they going to still have pain. And many times, especially when I have a case that has a settlement, just because they get that check does not take away the fact that they're still going to be in pain, the fact that they're still injured, for an example, or that they're traumatized. So closure is really, a, I think, a subjective situation. And it depends on the person. And I don't think people truly ever let somebody go. It's just, how do they deal with it? Yeah, and in my work as a journalist, not so much on crime, and also said she could be fair, quite amazing, may say something about the larger culture, especially when we know there is one in 100 Americans behind bars. Let me jump out to Joanna Greenwald. Joanna, a couple questions. Would you be concerned as a defense attorney in this case about the racial composition of the jury? Yes. I would. Why? Um, I know I, I talk about the jurors and the psyche of the jurors.